As I was fixing this video, preparing this video um, concerning missing persons or unidentified people in the area of Knoxville, Tennessee, Knox County, Blount County, in those areas, this story broke, which was related to that same area, and I wanted to talk about that Thursday night, which would have been February the 8th. 2024, um, two police officers in Murrayville, Tennessee, attempted to pull a car over. The driver refused to get out of the car. There was a little bit of a um, back and forth between the police officer and the suspect, and he was asked to get out of his car. He refused, and I believe the story said that the police officers used a taser but the man reached for a gun. He ended up uh, shooting and killing one police officer, 43-year-old uh, Greg McCown, and he shot the second officer, who was a young a female officer who was 22 years old. She survived the shooting, um, but the other police officer was killed. Uh, the suspect, Kenneth Wayne DeHart, fled in his car, and um, now there's a manhunt underway. His car was found some distance away. Blount County um, Sheriff's Office announced it arrested the brother of Kenneth DeHart Jr., a fugitive suspected of shooting two deputies and killing one. They are now offering an $80,000 reward to find Kenneth DeHart after the Thursday night shooting. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation said the two deputies tried to pull over an SUV on Sevierville Road in Murrayville Thursday night for erratic driving. The driver would not cooperate and refused to get out of the vehicle. The deputies used a stun gun to no effect, and at some point, DeHart pulled out a gun and shot both deputies. 43-year-old Greg McCown was taken to the hospital but later died. The other deputy was transported with non-life-threatening injuries. They arrested his brother, Marcus DeHart, for accessory after the fact. They said he helped him after the shooting and is being held on a $1 million bond. Deputies also arrested his girlfriend, the suspect's girlfriend, for accessory after the fact. According to court records, a deputy went to her home to speak with her, and while he was there, the phone rang, and she told the person on the other end of the phone, they're here, and hung up the call. They suspect that this was DeHart, and she was taken into custody for interference and accessory. Um, they say that this uh, impeded their ability to apprehend the suspect. The heart drove away from the, re from the scene and remains at large. His car was found abandoned in the Wildwood area. Police are asking for anyone who lives in that area to be on the lookout to check your security and doorbell camera systems to see if you may have seen him at any time. And then they give the phone number to the Bureau of Investigation to call Tennessee Bureau of Investigation if anyone sees him. This is from the DNA Doe Project, Cases in Kentucky and Tennessee. DNA Doe Project is a force to be reckoned with when it comes to solving cases. The nonprofit all volunteer genetic genealogy teams help law enforcement solve their most difficult investigation in investigations that involve unidentified people. It is our commitment that no Jane or John Doe remain unnamed due to the inability of the community to afford the laboratory work. Um, the organization uses funding for super, supervision, tools, and infrastructure to do the work and to cover 
the expensive costs of lab extracting and sequencing DNA from remains. So basically, they they just they get uh, donations, they get funding to help people, help law agencies, law enforcement agencies, do DNA testing on remains to try to find out who these people are. That's the case of what happened with the uh, Tracy Sue Walker. And I'm sure there have been plenty of others as well. I'm getting ready to do a story after this one, but I wanted to cover a couple of cases that they have been able to work on. This was the Chattanooga Birchwood John Doe. In 2006, some hunters found a body of an unidentified white man in the wooded area along Eldridge Road near Chickamauga Lake in Birchwood. He was reportedly wearing a gray t-shirt with a Tom and Jerry cartoon logo, a pair of Arizona brand blue jeans, white tennis shoes, and a bandana. He was missing some teeth, and he looked to be around the ages between 40 and 50. This was a homicide. Now, this is all the information provided on him. The next one is Laverne Jane Doe, 2007. In 2007, a police officer found partial skeleton remains in a remote area off of Hollandale Road in Laverne. Investigators found no clothing, but there was some jewelry, including two bracelets and a gold-plated ring with some stones. Now, these are just some of the cases that the DNA Doe Project are working on. I will look more into those to see what else I can find. Now, here is a case from Kingsport, Tennessee, and this one is one of the cases that they were able to identify. Kingsport, John Doe, 2003. A woman found a suspicious object that turned out to be the body of a man. The woman was riding her, bi her bike through Riverfront Park in Kingsport, Tennessee, when she spotted an object that was very odd to her in the Holston River. The body was found about 20 yards offshore, and a local forensic team found that the body had been in the river for about 7 to 10 days. This was believed to have been a drowning. The body has been re had been revealed to be that of a white male, 6 foot tall and about 180 pounds. Now, they estimated the age to be between 40 and 80, so that's a pretty good size jump. Found in his pocket was a BB&T bank envelope containing $267. Um, he would later, through DNA testing, through the DNA Doe project, would be identified as Jerry David Holbert of Charleston, West Virginia. So there is a picture of him here, and this is from Unidentified Wiki. Jerry David Holbert was a man who drowned in the Holston River in Kingsport, Tennessee. He was identified in 2020. Or Jerry had been reported missing in August of 2003 after he failed to arrive in Ohio. It is believed he left his residence in Charleston, West Virginia and boarded a bus to Ohio. At the time he vanished, he was suffering from dementia. It is believed he became disoriented. So it's possible that he just got on the wrong bus. Or maybe someone put him on the wrong bus. Maybe he was asking someone for help and they just, you know. On August 11th, his body was recovered from the Holston River in Kingsport. According to investigators, there was no signs of foul play and it is suspected his body had floated from upstream. It is unknown how he ended up in Tennessee. However, as the Holston River does not run through West Virginia, it is unlikely he died in, the, in that area. So 
They believe he went into the water someplace else and washed downstream. Kentucky Jane Doe identified. A survey crew said they found the partial skeleton, skeleton remains of a white woman in the northbound lane of I-65, which is about 12 miles north of the Kentucky-Tennessee border. Forensics believe that the person had been dead two to eight weeks prior to being discovered. So how was her body found in the northbound lane of I-65 if she had been dead between two and eight weeks? Did someone place her remains there? She had long reddish brown hair. She was 25 to 35 years old, five foot six inches tall. She had several missing teeth and a healed fracture of her upper right arm. She had a scar on her face and a rose tattoo on her chest. You know, some of these cases, we we wonder how they how they can go unidentified. Now, this one, she had only been dead two to eight weeks uh, when she was found. I don't know how long it was before they identified her, but we think about it and we think, where are the family? Does the, do these people not have any family looking for them? Keep in mind, some of these earlier cases before DNA was really a, a practice, you know, for them to be able to just put someone's DNA into a database and get matches. A lot of these people were reported missing. They were reported, especially if they had a history of any kind of criminal activity or drug activity. A lot of times the police would just kind of say, you know, they'll turn up. They've just went off to do their own thing. They'll turn up. And sometimes even the family members think that for a person's remains to be found and to go unidentified for so many years. And then when DNA does finally reveal who they are, their story is more bizarre than just the fact that they were unidentified. Investigators have identified a Nashville woman after her remains were found along a southern Kentucky interstate 20 years ago. Kentucky State Police, now let's see when this was posted. This was 2021 and she was found in 2001. Kentucky State Police said Thursday that Don Clara Plonsky Wilkerson was the woman whose decomposed remains were discovered October the 9th, 2001 at the 12-mile marker of I-65 in Simpson County. Nearly 20 years later, state police were able to identify Wilkerson, who was 45 years old at the time of her death. It is difficult to have an investigation where you don't even know who the victim is. This is from Bowling Green Police Officer Daniel Pretty. Even though this happened in 2001, we really feel like this is, this is our first opportunity to find out who this was and who did this to her. Kentucky State Police tells news reporters that the victim has been identified and her family has been notified. The cause and manner of death have never been released but her death investigation remains active. And that's pretty much all there was on this story. It doesn't really say if she had been reported missing by her family or um, they say she had been dead between two and eight weeks. Do they believe this was some type of domestic violence situation? Here's what I could find about her on Unidentified Wiki. In October of 2001, a survey crew found the decomposed remains off of Interstate 65 at the 12-mile marker north of the Kentucky-Tennessee state line. Isotope DNA analysis determined the woman had spent much of her adolescence in the Great Lakes or New England region. Toward the end of her life, though, she had spent more time toward the Midwest. And then it just goes on to tell about her, um, her 
appearance and tattoos and the clothing that she had been wearing. And we, we now know that her remains were identified. It took them 20 years. So what was her story for those 20 years? That's what I'm trying to find out. It, was there anybody looking for her? Was anybody, you know, had she been reported missing her life during those years where she was missing? If any family members had reported her missing, if, you know, she had children out there somewhere that wondered what happened to her. I'm going to continue looking for more information on her. But as of right now, the only thing I can find is just the fact that she was identified after 20 years. Um, here's another one. Maury County, Jane Doe, 1975. Two hunters reportedly said they found human skeletal remains in the wooded area two miles off Joe Brown Road off Highway 99 in Maury County. The remains were found with a red shell blouse, flowered blue slacks, and Italian-made wedge shoes. After some forensic analysis, they found the remains were those of a black and female who was between the ages of 15 and 25 years of age. She was around 5 foot 4 inches tall and weighing around 130 pounds. It's, there's a possibility that she may have been a victim of a hit-and-run car accident. And that's really all there was on her, but I'm going to look and see what else I can find on her case as well. This one is from May 20th, 2020, from Knox County. The remains of a man believed to be between 55 and 70 was found in a wooded area of South Knoxville. He was wearing a navy zip-up hoodie, dress pants, and a navy, wind, navy windbreaker pants. So was he wearing, he was wearing both dress pants and windbreaker pants. He was estimated to be 5 foot 5 to 5 foot 8 inches tall. June 16th, 2020. Unlike others, this person has a potential identity. However, it has not been confirmed. A white man between the ages of 60 and 70 was found inside a green sleeping bag in a homeless camp near the railroad tracks near Scottish Pike Park. The forensic center believes he may have been Nick Campbell or was otherwise known as Railroad Nick. He was 5 foot 11. He was found wearing a black jacket, brown paints, and a black string necklace with a black pendant. So they believe it could be this man that was known as Railroad Nick. The man had been last seen by a friend on May the 16th who went to find him in June and, um, so they're, I guess they're waiting some kind of DNA confirmation, but do they have family members out there that they can compare that to? Unless the man's been arrested, unless these people have been arrested and their DNA has been entered into CODIS or um, kept on file, their fingerprints or something like that kept on file. This one is from September of 2021. The remains of a white man between 25 and 45 were found in a homeless camp. The forensic center says someone reported to law enforcement that the old man was dead in the camp. It must be something, a nickname that he went by. He was 5 foot 4 to 5 foot 7. This is from September the 9th, 2022. The forensic center said the remains of a man estimated to be between 40 and 55 and 5 foot 8 inches tall were found in a wooded area near Knott Avenue in Knoxville. When the man was found, he was wearing multiple beaded bracelets, a leather bracelet with a round metal, with round metal details, a white watch, 
with colorful numbers. A long sleeved black shirt, a green Michigan State University Nike shorts, black sweatpants, and yellow and black Jordan tennis shoes. He was carrying a black backpack and he had a navy sleeping bag. Um, sadly, a lot of these people were probably homeless. They were living in homeless camps, or if they were carrying backpacks or tents or sleeping bags, they were possibly homeless. It's possible that they could have been camping, but usually campers, people that are out just to camp, will have other equipment with them. They will have stuff like water bottles, maybe a GPS device of some kind or a phone. Um, there's a bunch of others here that go all the way to Gatlinburg and Sevierville. Uh, I'm not going to get into all of those right now. The next one was Knox County, August the 16th, 2022. The remains of a white woman with blonde hair believed to be between 25 and 50 years of age were found in a homeless camp. The forensic center says she's 5 foot 1 wearing a black tank top, a black hat with a Carhartt logo. They said she had an 8 inch scar running across her lower abdomen and a 2 inch scar on her lower back. November the 18th, 2022, the Forensic Center said the remains of a white man between the ages of 30, 20 and 30 rather, were found in a wooded area near the business park in Knoxville. There were pieces of a Suzuki motorcycle found nearby. They believe he may have been hit by this motorcycle. Um, he was five foot four to five foot six inches tall. They believe the man had been dead up to 18 months when he was discovered. A tree, cleaning, a tree clearing service found his remains. The remains of a white man estimated to be between 21 and 30 were found in the Coaster Rail Yard area in North Knoxville. He had brown hair and was estimated to be around five foot six and was wearing a red t-shirt with Best Italian Restaurant logo. According to NamUs, the man's body was buried underneath the railroad tracks and cut marks believed to have occurred at the time of his death were found on several parts of his skeleton. It is believed that he had been dead for about one month when his remains were found. Now that was in August of 1988. I'm going to include all, of, I'm going to include this link in the comments. And these, these are all located on NamUs. And you can find more details and information about each one of these cases on NamUs. I just wanted to include these people because someone out there knew them. Someone out there may still be looking for them. And it's sad that there's so many unidentified people. And whatever is happening in the Knoxville area, many of these people were found in homeless camps. So something happened in their lives where they ended up there. And there may be someone out there, a mother, a brother, or sister, or someone out there still searching for them. And um, the more of these um, teams that, like the Kentucky, Tennessee, the Tennessee Doe Project and, and groups like that that can get their DNA and, you know, work on that, the better. But it takes money, it takes volunteers, and it takes time. And hopefully one day many of these cases will be solved and people will be able to find out who these people are. Thanks for watching.